when did your love affair with art begin? Hmm, I'm not sure. It was when I was about five or six. I always woke up really early to watch cartoons. But one day I woke up about 4am, and back then television stations were shut down at night. So I couldn't get anything on TV. I found loads of colouring pencils, and drew my own cartoons. I drew a fruit bowl, so that I could use all the colours so exactly in the box. Like flesh it out with each and everybody has their part. It's just and my own primer stuck to the fridge. Obviously, almost every song you do is like that. And um, on, um, we got to that on Playland with the, we did start doing songs like this song, Little King, and um, we did uh, Candidate. But I, I wrote Easy Money, the single, uh, on the bus on the way to El Paso on the Messenger tour, and every sound check we were busting it out and uh, sort of fleshing it out, as you say. Yeah, and yeah, it's a really, it's a great dilemma. It's a, it's a really nice, nice dilemma. I, I'm, I'm sort of trying to make music. Oh, this sounds very, very reductive and very basic, but I, I'm trying to do with my band what I would like to go and see when I go to a show and what I would like to hear when I get when I get a record, and that's. Like energy, I kind of, you know, I'm all right with everybody doing what they do. That's fine, and the world's big enough for all kinds of music. But I found that there's so much. Every, almost every guitar record I heard always, always this kind of mid-tempo, kind of introspective, reflective thing. And the truth is, I think it's more difficult actually as a thing to write upbeat music, and um, uh, more of a challenge. So maybe that's why people don't do it so much. But when I go to a show, I want, I want to have some energy, and I want. Uh, and I want to have some tunes and melody too, so that inspired me when I did put my solo band together. That like, okay, try and keep the tempos up, try and keep, try and have fun and free to be what I, I kind of call outside music, which is it's kind of outside of you. Everything seems to be in the culture these days concerned with looking inwards, constantly looking in, and you know there's some value in that. But in music, not everything should be inwards and introspective and earnest. You know. You should put some energy out, and I, I think kind of that's my job to do that. So I was quite pragmatic about that. So okay, try and do that. And then um, the other thing about outside music is I am genuinely looking outside for inspiration. So I look at people running around cities and towns, and you know when I was making the record, um, as I say, most of it was written on source. So I'm seeing, I've got the energy of the audience. I've got the energy of travel, I've got the energy of all my crew around me and all of that sort of stuff, so it's quite upbeat. I'm not sitting at yeah, one o'clock, one in the morning with candles in my house with an acoustic guitar, which is what a lot of music sounds like. Um, but also it's um, it's music to be listened to outside. Um, no, it's music to, I hope, that, sound, that sounds good. I might have told you this last time, but uh, it's music that I hope sounds good on the way to college on the way to work, when you're on the, on the train, in the subway, on the way back from work, college, in your lunch hour, in the daytime. Talking Heads were really good at that when I, when I was a kid. Modest Mouse were really good for a band that do sometimes very woozy, um, deep, cerebral stuff. There was one or two times we, with Modest Mouse where we just played something that just be real quick, outbeat, upbeat, out music. As a, as a player, uh, I'm aware that because I've been doing some movie soundtracks, I do get to express the other side, the more dreamy kind of uh, stirring side, which I've got to do on the Spider-Man movie. Because the music on that movie is very, is quite uh, very swelling. Intense. Yeah. It's very heroic. And it, I was going to ask you about because you worked again with Hans Zimmer yeah. and also worked with Pharrell. Yeah. And I mean, so like, it's like, you know, home team back together kind of, yeah. kind of thing. I mean, with every, and with everything that Hans is doing, I mean, I still have not seen Interstellar yet, oh, yeah. the movie where he did the, the music for that, but um, I've checked out some of the soundtrack and it's just like, his ability to go back and forth, and I mean, like, do you use him as an inspiration at all? I mean, like, do you, do you look at the stuff, I mean, I'm not saying that you're going to go off and write like an epic massive score, or maybe you will, I don't know, yeah. but do you look at like film scores like that, especially having worked on them, and try to involve certain aspects of that into the music that you write solely for your albums and stuff or do you just kind of keep one side for album and one side for yeah, the score at the moment that's a good question because at the moment it's it's made me do the reverse going out and playing the pans particularly as a good morning and good afternoon i'm vetic on the movie graphic somehow clients please we've found the dawn the transit line okay. 
I'm coming back, I'm coming back for mine. <laughs> then I take yours with me, and then I'll see you at the top. And hold you down in my left titty. Cold wind blowing, showing no pity. That's not for me. Two more for the cook's matches. But who's the chef? Ah, what's eating you, duck? I see you never look, you just throw the ingredients in. Do you know what my man Benji B said to me? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening.